This is Red Carpet Flies, news on the fly, bringing you daily, unique, and interesting entertainment, celebrity, and luxury news for November 23rd. Peacock debuts Bel Air teaser. Peacock debuted a trailer for Bel Air, the upcoming drama series that reimagines the 90s sitcom The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. According to Variety, Bel Air stars Jabari Banks as Will, and the series follows Will's complicated journey from the streets of West Philadelphia to the gated mansions of Bel Air. So I took a look at this teaser, and it isn't much that is given away. Jabari, aka Will, falls into a pool where there's a basketball floating around, a crown, and an underwater throne, which young Will reaches out for and eventually sits upon the throne. And while all of this is going on, the actual Will Smith is dramatically reading the iconic words, in West Philadelphia, born and raised. I remember when this was a social media rumor and it was just buzzing around, so it's really exciting to see that it's actually been created. I grew up watching Fresh Prince of Bel-Air like many of you, so I will definitely be watching this series. I'm really curious to see this type of dramatic take on the sitcom. I'm really hoping this TV classic doesn't get messed up. And I know that's a lot to ask from Will and the rest of the creative team, but sometimes it's really hard for lightning to strike twice. So fingers crossed, this will be a good series. Bel Air is set to air in 2022. And while we're on the topic of shows, possibly sad news for Wendy Williams fans, Wendy Williams will not return to talk show and Sherry Shepard is the front runner to take over as host. According to the Jasmine brand, there have been reports stating that Wendy Williams will never return to her talk show and the fan favorite Sherry Shepard may be taking over as the official host. This week it was announced that Sherry will be the host to fill in for the final weeks before the holiday break. A source tells Radar Online that Wendy's production company is looking for a replacement host. It was previously reported that Nick Cannon's show was possibly going to slide into Wendy's time slot. However, Nick's ratings are said to be on the decline. I really hope this isn't true. I love Sherry and all the other hosts that have stepped up in Wendy's absence, but there's only one Wendy Williams, okay, that can deliver celebrity gossip. Can't nobody do it like Wendy. And there was a disturbing report that I saw a few days ago about Wendy Williams, but I decided not to report on it because I thought the bigger outlets would have reported on it, but it's been crickets. And I didn't want to repeat like old news. Reported that Wendy Williams is reportedly restricted to a wheelchair and rumor has it she's battling early dementia. I saw this article on Madame Noir and it states, allegedly, Wendy's capacity to walk has become diminished and she's solely using a wheelchair now, which was originally reported by Tone the Don. Twan the Don? I don't know how to say it. Tone, I think it's Twan. Twan the Don of the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. He continued, it is being reported that the 57 year old talk show host has completely lost all blood circulation in her legs and feet. The Wendy Williams show host is also allegedly suffering from early stages of dementia according to the pop culture reporter. Now we all know that Wendy Williams has Graves disease so uh, walking is a little bit hard for her especially when um, her feet are so swollen. But I'm not sure about the early dementia. If this is true, that is horrible news for Wendy Williams, and it truly makes me sad. You know, this show was her pride and joy. I don't know if you guys saw the Wendy Williams documentary that coincided with her self-titled movie on Lifetime, but she clearly shared that sentiment, and dementia is no joke. I have a grandmother in the early stages of dementia, and it's very difficult to see a loved one slowly decline. Recently, Wendy Williams' brother, Tommy Williams Jr., has denied such rumors, according to an article in Ebony. So whatever the reason keeping Wendy Williams away from her purple chair, I'm sending up prayers for her. The Porsche 911 Turbo that starred in Bad Boys is heading to auction. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Wanna own a piece of bad boy memorabilia? Well, here's your chance. The sleek jet black ride that starred in the iconic 90s blockbuster Bad Boys is going under the gavel at Meekum next year, according to the Rob Report. The car was one of less than 350 produced for the US market in 1994 and it appeared on the big screen one year later when Bad Boys debuted in 1995 and of course it comes complete with all the requisite certificates of authenticity from both Porsche and Columbia Pictures. 
After the production wrapped, the coupe went home with the movie's director Michael Bay, but was later sold to a film producer, Matt Sandstone. The A-list four-wheeler changed hands a few more times before it was snapped up by the current owner in 2014. The car has appeared at numerous auto shows, and most recently, it graced the red carpet at the Bad Boys for Life premiere in January 2020. As expected, the two-door is presented in mint condition and has just 34,396 miles on the ticker. The Bad Boys 1994 Porsche 911 Turbo will be auctioned at Mecham's Florida sale in January 2022. The auction house has not yet given any estimates regarding the sale price, but it's safe to say that this bad boy won't come cheap. This is a sexy car and would make a great addition to someone's car collection. The car is a bit more boxier than I remember, but it's still just as sporty. So all you bad boy fans, get your money up so you can own a little bit of bad boy history. HBO Max drops steamy teaser for Channy Tatum's Magic Mike reality show. Get your singles ready to start making it rain in your living rooms. Nearly 10 years since the release of Magic Mike, HBO Max announced the arrival of the new reality spinoff series in which down and out strippers compete to become the all-star erotic dancers popularized by the 2012 stripper flick, reports the New York Post. A steamy strip teaser for the new series, aptly titled Finding Magic Mike, dropped last Friday. The cast list includes Adam Rodriguez, Luke Brodlick, Allison Fall, and Vincent Marini. Meanwhile, the FMM judge panel includes Whitney Cummings, Nikki Glasser, Nicole Scherzinger, Amanda Seals, and Robin Thede. It's unclear if Tatum will be making an appearance. Finding Magic Mike will premiere on December 16th on HBO Max. This reminds me of Chocolate City's reality show Vivica's Black Magic in which men competed to be in her male review in Vegas. This too was based off the film Chocolate City featuring Michael Rashad and Vivica Fox. I briefly worked on the film Chocolate City when the movie was in its infancy. And I know you guys think I'm probably making up all these stories that I tell you, but hand to God I'm not. Bible, I'm telling the truth. I'm just like a million years old, I don't sleep, and I've been around the entertainment industry for a while. However, I haven't been long enough to be considered a Hollywood insider. I'm just like inside adjacent. If like Hollywood and the entertainment industry was like a circle, I would be like on the like on the very edge. Anyway, when I first moved to LA, I worked with the director and executive producer of Chocolate City, Jean-Claude Lamar, who is a great guy, and his partner Eureka, who I adored. I worked with them in the beginning stages of the movie development. Now, I was by no means a major player in this movie or the making of this movie. I was just a helpful hand and I want to make that very, very clear up front. Jean-Claude Lamar also offered acting classes. So I took his acting classes and I played a very small role as an assistant in his movie Motives. So I was around when the movie was still kind of an idea. It was really cool seeing the movie making process. I eventually ended up parting with them mainly because I was broke as a joke and I couldn't even afford to pay for gas to get to the studio and I was too proud to let them know that I was so broke so I kind of let the relationship die. I did get the opportunity, however, to cover their red carpet, so that was nice. And now I believe that there is a Chocolate City mail review in Vegas that is currently active and still has shows. Anyway, the difference between Vivica's Black Magic um, reality show and Finding Magic Mike is that Finding Magic Mike is giving ordinary guys a chance to work their magic. Whereas with Vivica's Black Magic, they had, they had dancers and they already had some established strippers vying to be a part of the male review. The FMM, you know, Finding Magic Mike guys, some of these guys have soft, squishy little bellies and not at all what you would think of a male stripper. No offense, but these guys look pretty ordinary, which is genius for the Magic Mike team, right? By doing this, they separate themselves from other male review reality shows and also they pull at what I like to call the cute and cuddly card. They have all these fluffy guys on there and they soften the edge of male strippers. I think in one part of the trailer, cause you know I watched it, one of the guys gets stuck trying to, he gets like stuck in his shirt while he's trying to take it off and another part of the trailer, a guy is giving a grandma a lap dance. It gives off like cute and cuddly vibes which pulls at your little heartstrings and you find yourself like rooting for these guys and then boom, just like that, 
The Magic Mike team has drawn in a different demographic that you wouldn't necessarily expect to be interested in a show like this. Do you guys get what I'm saying? This reality show doesn't leave you feeling all dirty and full of lust like other male reality shows. Anyway, if you're interested, it will premiere on HBO Max on December 16th. Well, that's it for Red Carpet Flies News on the Fly for November 23rd. Please like, follow, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Red Carpet Fly, and also follow us on Instagram at Red Carpet Fly. And until tomorrow, always stay fly.